As the Earth rotates over 24 hours, the planet responds to the extraordinary power of the Sun. At dawn, plants and plankton begin to photosynthesize, using the light to make sugars and starches, the basis of the food chain. Sunlight drives wind and weather around the globe. When the air cools at night, it triggers much of the Earth's rainfall. We are part of this circadian pattern, too, built to respond to the daily influx of energy from above. The cells in our bodies need sunlight to create vitamins in our skin. Even the flight paths of planes reveal our intimate relationship with the sun. Aircraft travel westwards in the morning to extend the day, and eastwards in the evening to reduce the night. But ironically, the biggest threat to this finely balanced arrangement is from the same thing that allows it to exist in the first place. The SDO satellite records the ultraviolet radiation released by our star. Charged particles, fractions of atoms, protons, electrons, and neutrons are constantly thrown out along with massive pulses of electromagnetic radiation. But occasionally, the sun throws out what's known as a coronal mass ejection. This supercomputer visualization shows a cloud of plasma millions of kilometers wide racing towards the Earth. If these solar particles were free to hit the Earth's surface, they would do serious damage to any living thing, producing fatal mutations in their DNA. Fortunately, the Earth has a defense. An invisible force field called the magnetosphere surrounds our planet, visualized here in unprecedented detail. These images are generated by data from five magnetically tuned satellites. Called Themis, the network of spacecraft reveals the force field as it is constantly bombarded by the sun. The shape of the field is produced by the sheer force of the radiation hitting it, a nebulous teardrop 200,000 miles in diameter. As wave upon wave of solar particles strike the magnetosphere, most are deflected. But when a coronal mass ejection arrives, the charged particles peel open the magnetic field's outer layer. The particles are now free to rush in towards the planet. The Earth's inner magnetic field steers the radiation towards the poles, triggering one of nature's most remarkable sights. The Northern and the Southern Lights. And here, we can see the Earth's second layer of defense. Giant ribbons of plasma stream downwards, encircling both the North and South Poles. As they strike the upper atmosphere at extreme speed, they excite the molecules of air. The 
The process makes the air molecules glow. The oxygen radiates red and green, the nitrogen blue. Energy that would otherwise mutate all life on Earth is dissipated by the upper atmosphere. But even this extraordinary apparatus is only one part of how the atmosphere protects life. Nighttime from space. The Earth buzzes with lightning. The Earth's atmosphere is seeking equilibrium. Each day, the combined force of sunlight and vapor creates 40,000 thunderclouds. The clouds build up vast stores of electrical charge. Every half hour, 100 megawatts is generated inside an average thundercloud To equalize itself, it must transmit the negative energy down to the ground as lightning. The electric charge inside the thundercloud grows until it's so strong that the air breaks down into ions. A tiny path forms in which an electrical current can flow. Within a thousandth of a second, a lightning bolt is initiated. It's no thicker than a human thumb, yet five times the temperature of the surface of the sun. As it burns through the air, this bolt of energy breaks the nitrogen molecules in the air apart. Oxygen bonds with the nitrogen, creating a substance called nitrate. Approximately 14,000 tons of nitrate is transported around the world in weather every day. It falls to the ground in rain. Nitrate is vital to almost all forms of life. From the photosynthesis of plants, to the respiration of more complex organisms, Nitrate has driven key chemical reactions in living things for millions of years. But at the same time, it transmits a positive charge upwards into the sky. A vast column of charge rises out of every thundercloud. This invisible force moves at almost the speed of light towards the atmosphere's outer shell. This is the ionosphere, a thin veil of mostly hydrogen and helium gas. Now, for the first time, it's possible to see electric charge interact with this rarefied realm. The ionosphere acts as an electrical conductor. It distributes the charge all around the globe. And we now know that without this global electrical circuit, there may well be no life at all. <laughs> 